Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 41 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. We're just about ready to wrap up the MIDI recording and note entry methods and move on to some other electronic music production topics. But first in this video, I wanna show you how to use a feature in Logic called Step Input. Step Input allows you to enter in notes without having to record in real time. So if you struggle playing in real time or recording with your MIDI controller, or maybe you're a beginner at keyboard, this technique can be really helpful for you. There are two main ways you can use step input, one with your MIDI controller, or two if you don't have a MIDI controller, you can use Logic's built-in musical typing keyboard, which you can hide and show by pressing Command K. So in this video, I'll demonstrate both methods first with the MIDI controller and then second with the musical typing keyboard. But before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. If you're a musician, songwriter, or producer, and you work with collaborators on a regular basis, you've gotta check out boombox.io. Boombox is an incredible new service that allows you to upload your tracks and then invite collaborators to view, download, and leave time-stamped feedback on your tracks. Or if you're a mixing engineer like me, you can give your mix clients viewer access, which means that they can listen to and comment on the files, but they cannot download, edit, or delete the files. Once the client is happy with my mix and they've paid the final balance, I change their access to editor and they now have access to download their track. This is an incredibly helpful safety for me when working with my mixing and production clients. Boombox.io is absolutely free to get started. So sign up for an account today and get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so one thing I wanna mention here up front is that if you're making drum beats, the step sequencer is going to be a much better note entry method than step input for drums and beats. So I'm not even going to bother showing you how to do this for beats, but it is very helpful for chords and bass lines and other melodic elements, especially chords. Okay, so let's start with chords. I've got an 80s bit rate synth pad here. What I'm gonna do is right click or control click and just create a new MIDI region. And you can just drag this out to the length you want. Double click on it to open it up in the Piano Roll Editor. Now the traditional method you typically use in the Piano Roll Editor is maybe to use the pencil tool and just enter in notes one at a time. But Step Input allows you to do this even quicker without using any of these tools. So how do you turn on Step Input? Well, you might remember from a previous video, the MIDI Out button, which allows you to drag over notes and hear their output. That's what this green button is here. But the red one, is the MIDI input button. This essentially engages step input. And if you didn't know, there is a shortcut for both of these. Command I will turn on and off MIDI input and Command O will turn on and off MIDI output. So I'm just gonna turn on MIDI input and all you have to do is make sure that that track is selected and that region is selected and you have the piano roll in focus and then just simply play a note or a chord on your MIDI controller. So you can see there how it enters in the entire chord with step input. You can do this one note at a time. But you do have to be aware that if you overlap the notes like so, it's just gonna stack them as a chord. So if you actually want the notes to be separate, you have to give them a little bit of space as you enter them. So this is sort of like a manual way of entering the notes without having to rely on the note input tools in the piano roll editor. Now the problem here is that it's just entering in eighth notes. How can I enter in notes other than eighth notes or change the duration of my step input? You can do this by pulling up the step input keyboard. You can find this by going to window and all the way at the bottom, there's an option that says show step input keyboard, or you can press option command K. Now, if you plan on using step input quite a bit, you definitely want to commit that option command K shortcut to memory because it's gonna make things a heck of a lot easier for you. Now, there's a lot of controls here in the step input keyboard. Only some of these we're actually going to use for piano roll step input, mainly the note durations right here, the note rhythmic durations. There's also a dotted rhythm and a triplet rhythm. So if you don't know what these mean, these are just musical symbols for musical durations. So you have a whole note that's like four beats, a half note that's like two beats long, a quarter note, which is one beat, an eighth note, a 16th note, a 32nd note, and a 64th note. 
So let's say, for example, I want to enter in a whole note chord. All I would do is click on the whole note, and then with step input turned on, I just play in the chord on my MIDI controller. Now, the other thing that's really cool about step input is it also is velocity sensitive. So if I play the chord a little louder on my MIDI controller, so the harder I press the keys, the higher the velocity will be. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete those and then set the playhead back to the beginning. So wherever the playhead is, is where the notes are going to be entered. And then maybe I wanna to go to a half note. Maybe back to a whole note again. And then I'm gonna to go to an eighth note. And then I want a dotted quarter note now. So you just click the quarter note and then click the dotted value. So a dotted quarter note is like a quarter note and a half. So a quarter note plus an eighth note. Go back to an eighth note, make sure to turn off the dot. And then another quarter note, dotted quarter note that is. Now, one of the reasons why I said you want to memorize the shortcut for the step input keyboard is while you're using step input, you cannot press the space bar. The space bar is actually just going, yeah, there you go. The space bar is just going to enter in silence for the duration that you've selected. And it's also going to try to play back everything in your project, you know, one beat at a time or one eighth note at a time. So if you want to go back to normal playback, you're just going to quickly press Option Command K, bring that out, and now I can just use the space bar normally. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off step input. It's very important to make sure that you turn off the MIDI input because if you start playing on your MIDI controller, you're gonna start accidentally entering in notes. So I've got my chord progression there. Let's just trim that up, click on it, hit Command R a few times, and let's move down to the bass. So we'll create a new MIDI region here as well. Let's drag that out, open it up in the piano roll editor, go back to the beginning, Option Command K to bring up the step input keyboard and turn on MIDI input. Now, another function I didn't show you before is that you can use the left and right arrow keys to position the playhead when you have the step input keyboard pulled up. So if I have an eighth note selected, it's going to move left and right at an eighth note duration. So if I want to enter in a note here for my bass line, and then I want to jump forward and skip an eighth note, I can do that. And this time, instead of using my MIDI controller to input notes, I'm actually going to use the musical typing keyboard. So I'm going to press Command K, and I know this will get a little confusing with all these different keyboards up, but what you can do is just set your value you want, and then use the home row keys for white keys, and then W, E, T, Y, U, and O, and P for your flat and sharp keys. In addition to that, you can adjust the octave here. So if I want to go down to the C1 octave, for bass, I can do that. You can also adjust the velocity here because obviously your typing keyboard doesn't have velocity sensitivity. So this is how you can adjust the velocity. So I'm gonna keep this really simple. I'm just going to start with a really basic sort of four eighth notes. I'm just basically pressing H to enter in the note Then I'm pressing the arrow key to move over. So again, that can be helpful if you don't have a MIDI controller, uh, but I prefer not to use it that way. But let's go ahead and just repeat that. Go ahead and turn off step input. Let's see what that bass line sounds like. Very simple, but it works. Let's add in some plucks here. So I'll go ahead and add another MIDI region. I'm gonna to try to get some sort of offbeat rhythms in here as well. So this time I'm gonna use 16th notes. And again, you can just press left and right to jump around.
Okay, so I got all that entered in. It does help if you know what notes you want to enter in first, as opposed to trying to just make it up on the spot. Let's go ahead and just hide the keyboard there, and let's see what this sounds like. And this is completely unrelated to step input, but for short staccato leads like this, I like to add a bit of a delay to it, in particular, some sort of a dotted delay. So you can do like a dotted quarter note or a dotted eighth note. It just gives it a bit more of like a rhythmic flair to it. wrap up this video with one final MIDI input tool for step input that allows you to adjust and change the pitch or velocity of any note. And you can access this by clicking on the MIDI input button and then hold option and click on it again. And you'll see that the icon changes. This is pitch and velocity editing mode. So what you can do is select a note and then you can play that note again on your MIDI controller to change its velocity. And you can also change the pitch. So maybe I want to click on this G note here, and I want to go up an octave this time. It'll move that note up an octave and remove the existing note that's there. Now, this only works on a note-by-note -note basis. You cannot do this with whole chords. So you have to do it one note at a time. Technically speaking, you're supposed to be able to just double click on this to access this as well. But for some reason, I always it's always kind of glitchy for me. So I usually yeah, I'll, I'll click on it, then I'll hold option, click on it again. And then if I want to get the other edit mode back, I just turn it off. And then wait, you know, wait a second or two and then click on it again. And it takes me back to, you know, normal MIDI input. It's a really niche thing, but it's there if you want to use it. So there you go. That's how you can use step input in Logic Pro. It's not necessarily my favorite for entering notes in all situations. I mainly find it most helpful for entering in chord progressions. And like everything else in Logic, there are two or three different ways to do just about everything. So pick the workflow that works best for you. We're gonna wrap up MIDI note entry methods in the next video with a very cool method called note repeat, which is great for entering in really fast rhythms, especially trap style hi-hats. So stay tuned for that one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.